Hello guys and welcome back to another Big Brother episode and today I think this episode is going to be titled something to do with misinformation and a lot of meddling on one person's part causing a lot of hassle in the house for a zero reason and I think it's a really weird choice but we'll get further into that in this episode. We also have the power of veto. As we saw in the last episode, Kenny, Angela and Lisa are up on the block. And one of them will be taken down before the end of the episode. So, oh my god. This was a tough episode to watch, i got to be honest. And I think it stems from the fact that actually I feel like Angela is kind of being set up here. And I'm not happy about it. I'm not like 100% an Angela stan as I was in the first week because I feel like she is just getting a little bit messy and a little bit chaotic. But she didn't deserve what happened to her in this episode. I'm going to be 100% honest, she didn't deserve it. And we'll get into that. But before we get into it, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying and make sure to like, comment and subscribe doing all them YouTube things that you guys do so well. I see you all in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts, your feelings and your opinions on different people we'll have a friendly chat no nastiness please i ain't in the mood for that but if you are here spread love not hate yeah so this episode started with some new alliances being brought into the mix quinn and brooklyn are kind of on the same wavelength with the fact that they feel like they are spare parts in the pentagon alliance the pentagon alliance seems to be the one that's controlling the house currently but i feel like that's just because chelsea's in charge and it consists of obviously brooklyn quinn chelsea cam and cedric it's an interesting mix of people but i do feel like this team is not going to last very long because i think quinn and brooklyn are already on the wavelength aha I don't think this is lasting very long because we can't let it. Those three are tighter than us five. So who's going to go when it comes to top five? We are. So we need to work on that now. He also mentioned that he's in an alliance with Tucker, Kimo, Cam and Quinn called the Andersons. That's like a little team one, team one, day one alliance because they were all the people in the have not room. And then there's also a further alliance with Quinn, Kimo and Tecor, Tecor, Jesus, and they're called the Visionaries. And that's the one that Quinn wants to put the most time and effort into trusting because he feels like he can trust Kimo and Tecor. Now, that's a lot of alliances for Quinn to be in. He's in a lot, a lot of alliances. And I don't know how that's going to fare for him. And I think this episode has kind of proved that actually having all these alliances, these crazy big alliances, are actually not helpful for his game. Because he owes too many people loyalty. And he's having to basically backstab people's loyalty in order to further his game with other people. So obviously, you may be wondering, what am I talking about? What has Quinn done? Why is Angela so begrieved? What is going on here? Well, let's just say that t -Core, Chelsea, Cedric and Cam were all having a little chat outside and they were like, yo, let's try and get as far as we can in this game. We don't want it to appear like it's another cookout alliance because we've seen how that goes down on other series where they're, they're kind of scared of that happening again. And they were just like, let's just keep it low-key, let's keep it chill, but like, let's just help each other as best we can. <sighs> so Angela looks out the window and goes, oh, rah, there's four people on that, on that hammock. Three of them I already have a kind of bond with. t -Core, Chelsea, Cedric. I've already protected them week one, said I'd protect them. So let me try and get in that group because obviously Cam is there as well. And I want to team up with Cam too. So I'm sitting there going, okay, that makes sense. That's fine. So she goes over to Quinn and she goes, look out the window. That's the group. And obviously with the added context of her talking in the confessionals about how she wanted to team up with them, she wanted to be a part of their group. Obviously I saw nothing wrong with that. But Quinn immediately goes, why is she calling out these group of people, especially when all of them I'm working with in some way, shape or form? 
And I was sat there like, Quinn, no, no, don't take this the wrong way. Please don't take this the wrong way. Go and talk to her, Angela and ask her, what did you mean by that? And she would have said to you, those are the people that I think we should work with because we have a final two and I want us to get as far as possible, but we have to work with people. If he had just spoken to her and clarified, this whole situation could have been avoided. But instead, he goes outside and later on he's talking to Joseph and Chemo and t -Core, And he turns to t -Core and he goes, yo, by the way, XYZ was said, Angela said to look out for you guys, to watch out for you guys. Um, Quinn, that was never said. That was never said. So that felt unfair. But I was like, okay, maybe he's just like meddling a little bit. And he admitted he was. But also, it's a very dangerous person to start meddling with is Angela. Because Angela holds your secret of deep fake HOH. And I'm not being funny, but it's not like Mackenzie's superpower where like it doesn't matter whether it gets revealed because at the end of the day, nobody has any control over it. The America does. However, deep fake HOH. You're the one who's controlling the nominations and you're meant to be doing it secretly. But if Angela reveals that you have the deepfake HOH, I'm sorry, but you've then blown your superpower. It's no longer a superpower. It's just you get to be HOH for the week. You don't get to be secret HOH for the week. So I feel like Quinn is playing a very dangerous game and a very poor game in this sense by setting Angela up like this. Because what's stopping Angela from just going, hey, yo, guys, he's got this power by the way, just thought I'd let you know, I would, if I was put in this position where someone's blatantly spreading mistruths and lies about me, yeah, all your secrets are coming out, I can't trust you anymore, so why should I trust, why should I let the trust between us, the secrets that we shared, why should I keep them secret anymore? So, essentially, it was just spinning out of control, and obviously t -Core wasn't particularly happy with the fact that Angela was calling out this uh, alliance that wasn't even an alliance and it was just causing a lot of stress unease and tension within the house so obviously the veto challenge rolled around and this one was your classic tower building challenge they do it in every single series it's so frustrating because oh my god one wrong move and your whole thing comes clattering down you have to start again last season's flower power one bullshit that one was genuine and utter i can't believe that they've even allowed this to happen because this is practically impossible but this one felt a little bit easier and a little bit less annoying but also i thought that it was actually it was tough to get the right strategy for it and only one person managed it well obviously because they won so the people who joined them in the challenge were obviously brooke and joseph again brooklyn and joseph um, which means that the only new person in this veto challenge from last week is Chelsea, which is kind of strange, I won't lie. Like, it's actually kind of weird. But anyway, it is what it is. Not really much you can do about it. So, obviously, they're stack, stack, stack. They're building, building, building. And Kenny is the only person that works out that if you perfectly balance three of the same sized O's around, put up uh, like a platform on top of it, and then build up from there, he was the only person that noticed it notice it notice that there was three of a kind and also i'm not being funny i'm not being funny but if you see somebody is getting higher and higher up in your stack in their stack why would you not try and copy their technique because clearly it's working and your one is not that really bugs me about these challenges because i do think and i do sit there and i go why are you not copying people is like if you were in like separate booths i could understand it but you can quite literally see each other's progress so just copy them and try and do it better try and do it quicker and see where it gets you because at the end of the day it's working for them so yeah honestly kenny kind of slayed this he kind of deserved the win because he was the only person that got the actual method of doing it correct so yeah interesting that kenny is now our veto holder he's obviously going to take himself down but the question now is who does chelsea put up so we're back to the whole misinformation lying cheating scandal thing that's happening and oh god the news ended up trickling back to chelsea and chelsea's like angela what are you doing why are you calling out our alliance that's not even an alliance why are you saying watch out for us 
Again, she did not say that. So when she goes to talk to Angela and it's like, hey, yo, what's X, Y, Z? Angela's like, okay, first of all, I only told one person that. And he's making it sound like I've been spreading it around the house. Secondly, I said it in the context of that's the group we want to work with because I trusted Quinn. And Chelsea was like, I actually do believe you. And I was like, good, because this is so much bullshit from Quinn. And it's so upsetting that he's decided to just tank Angela's game when she holds this secret about him. It's a dangerous, dangerous position to be in. And honestly, at this rate, I hope she exposes him. I must say it. I hope she exposes him. And I hope then he can't use his superpower. Sorry, but you play the game. If you're going to trust people, trust them. Don't then switch up on them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that really, really jarred me. So then Angela goes to talk to Quinn and is like, yo, you made a mountain out of a molehill there. I said one thing to you, you spun it out of control. Then t comes in and she starts to say like, look, you might have said it in this way, but look, this is how it was interpreted. It was interpreted as if like, look out for a potential new cookout. And Angela was like, oh my God, that never even crossed my mind. Like, what's going on here? And obviously, Angela starts to get upset because, and like, I can understand why she was getting upset. She's getting upset because she feels like she is now being painted as something that she's not. And that would upset you. I didn't appreciate the fact that t went back outside and was like, I can't believe she's crying over this. And I was like, well, did you actually listen to what she said in context? Because, yeah, when you, when you start bringing up the sort of oh um this could be viewed as this angle yeah it's gonna upset her because that's not how she meant it and it is going to upset her we already know angela's a very fragile person so i just felt it was a bit mean-spirited from t -Core. however i understand why she was saying it because if it was meant in the other way then yeah it would be worrying and it would be concerning but i just i felt like neither angela nor t -Core held it heard each other out and it was kind of jumped to conclusions. And then it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to walk away now. Nothing was resolved in that conversation. And honestly, I did feel bad for Angela. I did because she didn't deserve that. Do you know what I mean? Like when she called out Matt, she was rightfully calling out Matt for like basically saying stuff behind closed doors, like bitching about her around the house. Like there was a lot of stuff that he did wrong. But all Angela said to Quinn was, Go look at the window. That's the group. No more than that. Quinn jumped to conclusions. And I'm sorry, but he did. And I'm I'm not as much on board with her, him anymore. I did appreciate the fact that Angela went and apologised to t -Core And was like, I'm sorry I didn't hear you out. I'm sorry, etc, etc. And it seems like those two are, are back on board. I do still really like t -Core. I felt this whole situation was just blown massively out of proportion. And... It just pisses me off that it's come to that. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was so unnecessary for no reason. So, who's going to be the replacement nominee, you may wonder? Well, Tucker actually volunteered to be the pawn because he knows he probably has a better chance of winning in the AI arena than um, Angela and Lisa do. However, he decided to call Mackenzie's bluff on the power. He was like, I think Mackenzie's got it. Let me just see how she reacts. And he just went, oh, yeah, I think you've got the superpower. I think you've got double votes. And she's like, ah, no, I haven't got double votes. What are you on about? <laughs> so then she drags him into another room and she goes, right, I actually do have a secret power. And he goes, oh, my God, tell me more. Tell me more, because I'm going to use this against you to try and get you out. Yeah keep talking, keep talking, aha, uh -huh. yeah, dig yourself a further grave, then he goes straight to Chelsea and goes, yeah, we need to get rid of Mackenzie, or at least we need to put her up and make her waste the power, because as long as she has that power, we can't get her out of the house, and obviously, they don't know how long they have the power for, do they, so I think this is a smart strategy, Chelsea, honestly, I would respect you more as a HOH if you put Mackenzie up, I don't think you're gonna put Mackenzie up, but yeah, it, 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 it's a case of like, I hate when the show sort of does the whole, I, I, I think putting up Mackenzie's a really, really good idea. And then they just do the complete opposite. It's like, why? What was the point of you even including that? Like, actually, what was the point? So we head into the veto meeting and the veto meeting was 
fairly predictable, i got to be honest. Kenny took himself down. Tucker was put up as a replacement nominee. And it makes me wonder that if Angela or Lisa do win the HOH, will Tucker be going home? Because Tucker is actually a threat to the household. And he's he, he could be quite good at challenges we don't actually know. So I think this could be a very, very interesting ploy from Chelsea to maybe put Tucker up, lure him into a full sense of security and then send him back in. But I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm a bit concerned that Angela's going to go, especially on a week where, like, the house has kind of turned against her because of someone else's lies. That doesn't sit right with me. I hate when that happens because I just think, like, that's so, that's so unfair. But also, it's the game, in it? It is. It's the game. So that is pretty much it for today's episode. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you thought down in the comment section down below. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. I will see you guys later. Keep on ranting. Bye now.